Okay, we're back with part two of writing your own auto clicker using auto hotkey and having a graphical user interface. Last time we had just finished adding in the first button, which is going to run our spy tool. So I'll just uh, run that again. So when I press this open spy tool button, it should open up the spy tool, which will allow us to get our X and Y locations. Okay, next we're going to do our update button. So when we click the update button, we want it to update all the values that we had in the variables up here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say GUI, comma, submit. So this is going to cause it to submit a new update to all those things. And we don't want it to hide this screen or this window once we press the buttons. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to say no hide. And that's it for that. <clears throat> so when we press the button, it's going to submit update the values, whatever we fill in, in these places. Okay. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set a hotkey for these values here. And the way you do that with buttons is a little bit different than you normally would. So for example, down here, all I had to do was just type it out like this. But when I use variables, it's a little bit different. So the way I do that is I just type in hotkey, and then comma, and then the percentage sign around each of the variables that I have. So I have a start variable, and then a comma, and then whatever I'm going to title this as. So let's say this, let's call this Let's Go. Okay, and I'm going to do the same with the stop one. So I'm going to say hotkey, comma, percent, stop, percent, comma, and then I'm going to call this Let's Stop. Now I can go down here a little bit and sort those out. So we have let's go and then I'll put a colon and then I'll go down two lines and I'll just say return because we're not going to be filling anything in yet. I suppose it would help if you could see it. Return and then the same thing with the other one. So this one's going to be let's stop colon go down two lines and add in a return. Okay, so we have that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have the, we're going to fix this let stop. And the way we're going to do this let stop is we're going to actually use a variable. And we're going to use that as a global variable. So that way we don't have to uh, pass values around and everything like that. So we're going to say this is global and we're going to say um, let's call it stop what your yeah let's just call it uh, I I don't know if that's a valid character I don't care what it's called and it equals zero I don't care what it's called is equals zero and we're going to come down here so that way if the person presses the hot key that's going to trigger the stop I don't care what it's called is now going to equal one and let me make sure I have that the same I don't care what it what it is called so it's not what's what it's called what it's called okay I suppose I should come up with these variable names before I start filming this but anyway so it's gonna update its value to that and then at the end just before the return on this one here we're gonna reset that variable back to zero again so that way we can run the program again without having to restart it all so I don't care what it's called 
equals zero again. Okay. <clears throat> now what we need to do is check our variables. I mean our our radios. So we need to check which one of these is pressed. And the way we do that is through a bunch of if statements. So I'm going to say if and the variable we used was the same as their names. So if slow equals equals true do this. Okay, and since all of the buttons are going to be basically the same from here on out, I'm just going to do this one first and then change, copy and paste a few times to fill it out. So if slow is true, what we're going to do is first we're going to check to see, no, we need a loop. So we're going to loop, we're going to loop, and we're going to have an infinite loop. And inside of this loop, we're going to now check to see if I don't care what it's called, if it's been turned to, changed to 1. Because if it's changed to 1, we want it to stop looping. So we'll say, if I don't care what it's called, equals equals 1, what is it going to do? It is going to, once again, i got to move my uh, cursor thing. It's going to break. So it's going to break out of this loop, this infinite loop, if the value has been changed to 1. If it hasn't been changed to 1, what we want it to do is just click. So we want it to click. And where do we want to click it? We want to click it at our X location and our Y location. So with our variables, once again, we, we wrapped these around with a percent sign. So we had a X location. Move my mouse out of the way again. X location and we have a Y location. So now, if slow equals true, it's going to go into this loop, and it's going to check to see if I don't care has been changed. If it hasn't been changed, it's going to click at our X and Y location, and then it's going to wait a little while before it clicks again, because we want this one to be our slow. This is going to be our slow button, so we want it to wait. And I'm going to say, let's, let's wait or sleep for five seconds, which will be 5,000. And that's it. Now all I need to do is just copy this, go to the next line underneath it, and paste. And now all I need to do is just change a few things. So this is going to be if medium equals true, go into this loop and check to see if I don't care is still zero. If it's still zero, I want you to click the X and Y location and then I want you to wait, but this time I want you to wait one second. Then to the next one. We're going to check to see if fast equals true. So if fast is true, so if it's selected on fast, it's going to go into a loop, check to make sure that it hasn't been cancelled. If it hasn't been cancelled, it's going to click our X and Y location, and then it's going to sleep for one-fifth of a second, or 200. So it's starting to click pretty quick now. And then, one last time, we're going to go and check to make sure to see if fastest is true. If fastest is true, it's going to go into the loop again check to make each time it goes through the loop it's going to check to make sure that this hasn't been changed and then it's going to send a click to our X and Y location and it's going to sleep for no time okay so there we have it but if we left it like this the clicks the, the normal clicks aren't going to be very quick so what we need to do up here is we need to set mouse delay we need to set the mouse delay to negative one and that'll be the fastest that it can click 
the next thing that we need is if we have just clicked this thing right here if this was the last thing we clicked our X and Y locations are going to be in relation to this so it's going to start clicking here if this is a if this page is the last thing that we've clicked our X and Y is going to be in relation to that so we don't want to have it like that we want it to be always the same so we're going to use the whole screen as our as the, our X and Y locations and the way we do that is we come up here and we say the chord mode for the mouse is the screen so now it's going to use the whole screen for our X and Y location so when we use our spy tool we are going to be using our absolute values for our X and Y because before this it would use the relative ones and like I said it's relative to the window that you currently have open or active which we don't want so we're gonna go ahead and close that we're gonna save our changes we're gonna run our script again and I have a game open that can show the clicks so if you look over here when I click it's gonna sell off some some power and if I don't want to click it myself all the time all I have to do is I hit my open spy tool I click over here a couple of times to get it to register this location over here and then I press Windows A to lock it in place if you look down here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these two numbers here so I have 202 and 271 so our X is 202 and our Y is 271 the next I'm gonna change my hotkeys if I want to so I can change it to A and S if I want to or whatever whatever ones I whatever keys I want I can have it one and two whatever I want to change it to but I'm gonna stick with Z next then I'm gonna check my speed so let's start off with testing it at fastest we're gonna close the spy tool we're gonna to update our values and then I'm gonna press I'm gonna press my hotkey so I'm gonna press Z and it should start clicking and there we go I'm gonna press X to stop it and it stopped I'm gonna check on medium speed now we remember we did the variable so that way we changed the variable back to zero so now when we run it again it should go so if we press Z okay I press X update and go X again <laughs> change it to slow excuse me update it press Z to start and it should click once every five seconds now all right that's it you have your very own auto clicker